I suspect you have never heard of called These Animal Men. No, no, that's an interesting name, though. But no, I've never heard of them. Hmm. Um, well, the track is called You're Not My Babylon. I mean, that's an interesting title as well. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think you all can give this a listen. Full of um, intrigue. Yeah, it is a lot, really. Um, but yeah, I'll circle back and, and let you know what I think. Okay, enjoy. Don't tell me what to do. It's showtime, folks. everybody hello and a up welcome to another episode of into the music my name is john his name is andy and we're here to discuss a banging little number for you um before we do just quick reminder don't forget to like if you do like this um drop comments tell us what you think and above all don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss out on these lovely selections um andy are you ready um, for for another assault on your eardrums born ready born ready what have you got for cool. me today though so i've got a band i suspect you have never heard of called these animal men no no that's an interesting name though but no i've never heard of them hmm. um well the track is called you're not my babylon I mean, that's an interesting title as well. Uh, yeah. I think we can give this a listen. Full of um, intrigue. Yeah, it is a lot, really. Um, but yeah, I'll circle back and, and let you know what I think. Okay, enjoy. Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> Coffin death of my Tommy gun That Dillinger is such a bright man Billy is woman, she is crying They cut him down outside the radio house He beat her to a pulp Yeah When they first He's the closest she'll ever get to us To a family now She said so Never felt so Never felt so Never felt so
track But Billy never let your man down This could be the greatest moment of your life Don't make it your last It beats your mother with his fist to keep her from the reservation This was a bit of a statement song, wasn't it? So, The Wanderer Returns. What did you make of that light-hearted little ditty? Oh, my God. <laughs> well, there's a lot to unpack here, both visually oh, oh, and, yeah. and through, through the actual song itself, sonically. Um, I don't know if after having heard it, I have more questions than I did going in. Uh, in fact, I, actually, I'm sure I do. I do. Yeah, I I'm sure I do. you do. <laughs> um, no point in modesty at this point, Andy. We've been doing this too long. Um, so the song started, and it was a nice start with like the distorted guitar riff just sort of by itself for a moment. And then quickly thereafter, it's accompanied by the singer. Um, and much to my surprise, there's this narrative that's starting to be developed, I think, around Dillinger. Yeah. And, and get rid of that and see ya. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and his lover, and the song actually seems to be more about, is it, is it Frechette? Frechette? Billy Frechette, yes. the, the lover of, of um, John Dillinger. This, um, so that threw me off. Like, oh my God, I didn't think this was going to be a song about this. Um, but it seemed to take on uh, sort of this narrative as a song about uh, the, the whole their, their whole relationship, I guess, more from Billy's perspective or about Billy. Uh, but then the chorus kicks in and it takes on a first person narrative with the eyes. And I'm like, wait a minute. Up until this point, you've been describing a third person scenario. Dillinger this, Billy this, she's a girl, blah, blah, blah. And then you're going to eyes. So that kind of messed me up a little bit. I'm like, well, who is it? Is it the singer talking or is this the singer as Billy talking? I don't, I got lost there. Um but that's, again, more focused on the lyrics and sort of where, because, I mean, once they brought up Dillinger and stuff, I'm like, well, what the hell are they talking about here? Um, so I was juggling the music and the lyrics and my attention uh, for both. Um, then there's this descending walking bass line that introduces this, like, raucous chorus that is very hooky and very reminiscent of, like, 90s rock. Uh, so this it almost had a bit of a grunge quality to it, but like more pop grungy energy in the in the chorus. Um, I liked it and it was effective, uh, but it definitely reminded me of, of something that I had heard before. Um, and I love the guitar and the drums at the end of the chorus. At the end of each chorus, the drums and guitar do this, this thing that's just lovely. Um, so, yeah, at, this is where I said, at this point, I know the song is somehow anecdotal about Dillinger and Frechette, but the video is making this whole other statement that's happening yeah. in there. And I was like, again, I got further confused because now I'm going from, is it about Billy? Is it about, is it from the perspective of Billy? Or is it two songs within one song where the chorus is more focused from the singer's uh, identity? Um then I'm coupling with what I'm trying, I'm thinking about these two individuals from history. Then I'm being thrown this like social commentary observation 
societal shit in the video with all of these really hard to digest images yeah. um that are like a couple of them i was like god damn all right i get it stop with this you know what I mean? um and then it was like it's it's again it's hard to reconcile the i never felt so lonely lyric or refrain that comes through with the rest of the narrative style in the song so that was again i, I got i clearly got stuck on that at some point in this listen um and I loved how the end culminated in like this frantic, escalating, like sonic explosion. And then it just dies. Um, kind of like Dillinger's way out. Uh, so it was, uh, <laughs> it was, it was interesting. It was, I almost don't know if the song would have been served better if it was put against a, vi a different video, unless you're about to tell me that this video is intrinsically tied to somehow the lyrics or the the meaning of the song because i really was like i even said at the end oh that was a statement song and i don't think i don't even know if it was it was a statement video <laughs> yeah you know what i mean because the more i think about it the more i'm like i don't this song doesn't seem to be about like shooting up and anorexia and body dysmorphia and and racial tensions and all the myriad societal woes that were being portrayed in these like almost seizure inducing snippets um but anyway that, that's i guess that's part of the whole thing right this is my reaction i'm reacting to the visual medium as well as the the the, the audio medium so um i'm just confused john <laughs> so help me out here well you're right to be so it is a, i think a confused song um i will say that um i gave you this with this video because i think the video in itself even if you had it on mute as an experience. And so I thought it'd be good for you to see it at least. Mm. And I thought perhaps it would confuse, you know, interfere with the listening experience, but I thought, well, you know, you only live once or, or twice, Mr. Bond. Um, mm. So yeah, I thought, and it's actually a video which uh, was made for this. Um, and they used to use it in their warm up of their gigs. Um, and it's kind of, um, they had, I'll get into the band and I'll tell you about it. So they formed in 1989 in Brighton, UK. Uh, four main members, Alexander, I don't know how to pronounce his name. I think it's Bogue or maybe Boag. It's B-O-A-G, Bogue. Okay. Vocals, guitar. Julian um, Hewings on guitar and backing vocals. Patrick Murphy bass and Steve Hussey drums. So they came in, um, say, so late right at the end of the uh, yeah, beginning of the 90s and unfortunately they were lumped in with this artificially made genre or movement called new wave of new wave and um it was totally a conception by the music press there wasn't it wasn't real um but they bunged it's not even bands. inventive it's not even an inventive no, name. it's crap yeah <laughs> <laughs> but we've spoken about this before it's this kind of second wave of punk leaning sort of um music and uh -huh. there was smash and there were others as well that were nothing to do with it and it was kind of a precursor to Britpop in a way um, and what year was this again if you said it already uh, forgive me but oh, th this came out in um 94. Hmm. um and as soon as brit pop brit pop um sort of crashed in all of these bands were discarded like um like last week's music press um <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, they were quite notorious when they started off because they had many written and visual references to drug use, particularly Speed. I mean, one of their first songs was called Speed King. Um, the, uh, I think it's their first EP probably, it was called Too Sussed, which is that there. And this song was on it. It was also released as a seven inch, and only a true fan would have it. So there you go. Um, some great songs on there. It's only a five-track uh, EP, but really, really cool. Um, and they then brought out their first album called Come On, Join the Whole High Society, which is a lovely cover. And it's a fantastic album, actually. Some really, really strong songs on here. Um, they, I always saw them as a bit of a um, throwback to The Clash. Um, and on the second album, there was a song that's so Clash, it's unbelievable. But they even do like a semi-reggae song on this album. So it's got all those Clash leanings. 
um, which is not a bad thing to aspire to, I guess. Um, so yeah, they brought out um, that again in 1994. They did another really nice EP called Taxi for These Animal Men um, in 95, and then there was a break, and their second album, Accident and Emergency in 97, which is okay. There's two really good songs in there, and that's about it. They mm. had no commercial success. I mean, this single um, hit number seven, the Dizzying Heights of number 77 in the UK charts. So <laughs> as, as they say in cricket, they didn't really trouble the scorers. Um, so no commercial success to speak of. They had a following and, the, you know, they were much admired amongst, you know, certain people. So they broke up in 98. They went on and formed another band called Mo Solid Gold with a brand new singer called McKay, which broke up in 20, uh, 2002. And then there was another band after that called The Orphans, which then became The Orphans, as in T-H-E-E, Orphans. Which broke up in 2013 and that was more throwback to this sort of sound um the song itself i admit it is a bit confused as well so on the face of it it's john deliger and billy uh, for sets um and there's a lot in it which is actually fairly accurate you know um i'll get into the lyrics in a second um but I want, I question, there's a few things that come up in, in that relationship. Um, the, the violence aspect I was unaware of and can't find any support for that. But, you know, um, I don't know, it probably did happen. But there's the racial thing as well about how she was treated and how she went to prison um, um, and other stuff in it. I think maybe it's a metaphor for somebody's relationship. They kind of felt they were Dillinger and Frechette, which is a weird one to pick, I have to say, yeah. out of all the stuff you could pick historically. I mean, obviously, someone just fell in love with the story. Um, and the great lines in it, you know, as well, so-called quotes from, from Dillinger themselves. Um, but that aside, I really like this song because it is a great post-punk anthem. Um, there's lovely light and shade in it. And the ending, like that, that climactic ending, that's how you end a song. Jesus, mm. I mean, it's absolutely yeah. brilliant. And when it came out, we absolutely loved it. Um, yeah, and the video, I think, is really fairly um, disconnected from the song, but it's such an interesting video. Um, and it is uncomfortable in places. And I guess it's a, a lot of it is about identity. Um, you know, the mother, father stuff and, um, you know, all that sort of thing. And then it's this I at the end, you know, which is the shots of the band members. Mm -hmm. um, but this idea of society and, and you know, how you perceive things and identity within it, how, you know, the, the anorexic uh, woman against the the um, the bodybuilder as well, mm -hmm. you know, all that, we've seen all that before, but, you know, when it's set like that, it's, uh, it's really powerful. But I'll get into the lyrics. Um, which will make things none, none clearer. So, um, yeah, as you say, it starts off with coughing death with my Tommy gun. That Dillinger, he's such a brave man. So again, that's that's a change of perspectives twice there. Yeah, yeah. My Tommy yeah, gun, that line. Dillinger. Yeah. And Billy, his woman, she is crying. They cut him down outside the radio house, which is true. Um, and then that sort of semi-chorus. He'd beaten her to a pulp when they first met. He's the closest she'll ever get to a family now. She said so. Never felt so. Never felt so. I've never felt so lonely. Um, just on that, um, I, I didn't find any evidence. I had a little quick dive into Dillinger and that about... They met in a, um, a a show, I think it was, or something. She was working there. And the, the relationship only lasted sort of six, eight months. It wasn't, mm. you know, a lifelong thing. Um she helped drive a getaway car when he was injured once. I think that was it. And then she was finally done for harboring a criminal. And when apparently when she was arrested, Dillinger and one of the other gang were watching from like a street away and he wanted to go and save her, but realised he'd probably be killed if he tried to because there'd be plenty of people there. I um, mean, she was pretty harshly treated. I think she served two years in prison and then went mm -hmm. back to the reservation. Um, so... Picking that up, next to the lyrics is back on the reservation, they celebrate. Billy's come back home. 
but she died in 1969 of things she could not control, which is an interesting way of describing cancer, because yeah. that's what she died of. And then the chorus again. And then there's that breakdown, as you say, and it goes into Machine Gun Kelly was first to crack, but Billy never let her man down. This could be the greatest moment of your life. Don't make it your last, which is apparently what Dylan used to say to the bank tellers when he was holding them up. Mm -hmm. um, he'll beat your mother with his fist to keep her from the reservation to his bed and his hits, to watch him kill a policeman, to watch him die himself. And all this time he said, my love, my love, here's my love, baby, my heart, my soul, my kiss, my body. I'm not your Babylon. And that's how it ends. Um, that is so it's also interesting. the Babylon line. Like, I what, what, what does that mean? I mean, that's kind of open for discussion as well. I mean, obviously, the use of the word Babylon is very prevalent in um, Rastafarian culture. Um, and it can be symbolic of, you know, high civilization. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't go as far as say paradise but sort of aspirational almost. Mm. Um, but I mean, also Babylon can mean, um, uh, especially in that term, the, the establishment, you know, you're under the rule of Babylon. Um, so it's got a number of meanings and I think they just picked it because it sounded cool and they probably heard someone say it. I don't think it was a particularly informed. <laughs> I think they did a lot of things because they thought they were cool. Right. Um, Right. That's not, I mean, you know, it's just the, the young guys, you know, in a band, you know. Sure. Fair enough. I mean, the one thing I'll say about them as well is they were fairly, I, well, I, I knew, they were pretty openly gay, which again, sort of early 90s was quite a brave thing to do in this sort of... Um, like sort every of member of the band was gay? I think so. Oh, wow. I think so. Not anything wrong with it. No, I'm just, it's just... No, it's just, it was unusual at the time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, not even at the time, like four human beings from all different backgrounds come together to, to make a band typically. And the fact that they're all, they, maybe they just knew one another before they were artists or something, or it's just a wild case of coincidence. Yeah. I mean, not to be stereotypical, but um, they come from Brighton, which has a very large gay population oh, okay. um, culture within there. And, and then then, so I get, I mean, there and sort of like, you know, uh, Manchester in particular back then were the two places where I think they were, you would feel safe, you know, within a community. Sure. Uh, sure. But uh, yeah, this is a great sort of throwback punk attitude. Um, apparently, I, again, I did some research. There's not a lot on the internet about these guys. I mean, there really isn't, and I'm really surprised. Um, but apparently, the name was a quote or a misquote of how Julius Caesar described the British as these animal men. Mm. Because they were, you know, when they when they conquered, um, these sort of brutes running around in the dirt, etc. Um, so yeah, so I always it sounded to me like a literary sort of uh, illusion. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if Orwell had said it or something like that. These animals, yeah. Men, you know, it sounds like that, um, but apparently not. <laughs> so yeah, I've, I mean, as I say, the lyrics don't really clear you know, up too much. This shift in perspective, I guess, is interesting, but it's also frustrating as well. Um, I don't know how you like to dig into this. So yeah, uh, yeah. I didn't think I just, at the time this will drive Andy completely mad, but um, no, no I see I'm that, just yes, it, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know me. I'm a weirdo when it comes to lyrics. Yeah, yeah, but but yeah. I did really enjoy the music. Um, but it's dramatic, isn't it? It's I think a lot of it's for this dramatic effect, you know. Yeah, um, I think they've got their painting scenes in their in their mind of uh, you know that, that are you know which again is kind of like the video you know this dramatic stuff and you cut down outside the radio house and beating her mother with his fist to keep her from the reservation which I don't think really happened um, but uh, yeah yeah but it's a cool throwback song you know no no it was it's a it was a great song the lyrics were interesting just because i don't i didn't i couldn't make even yeah. if they could have been cleaned up to better portray what they were trying to um or maybe they didn't have a one thing but they wanted to touch on different things i'll yeah. i'll never know but it doesn't it's stop it being, yeah, yeah it, it doesn't yeah. stop it from being a good song or whatever so i yeah. I, I liked it a lot like the sound a lot definitely loved the end uh, you know, I don't want that to be the joke. Yeah, I love the ending because it ended. No, I like the ending because musically that's where it like all sort of, 
that's where they happened to put the the apex of the song um so yeah it was it was good it was interesting i liked it i love songs that talk about things that really happened so like the, these these nods to this this dillinger story um even if they took some artistic license it's still cool that they're alluding to this um in the tune so i liked it a lot man i'm happy i'm happy that you shared it with me it's really odd isn't it that these sort of punk wannabes from brighton decided to pick on dillinger as the subject matter for that so it's just really it seems like he amazing. would have a bit of punk iconography to him like the story of dillinger would be relatable from a punk standpoint yeah, standpoint yeah exactly exactly interestingly um, I, I don't know if you know this um but you know obviously he was notoriously fbi's most wanted um well what happened there was a there was a body uh before the fbi and his notoriety notoriety helped J. Edgar Hoover with the funding to form the FBI properly. And it oh. came from the manhunt for, for Dillinger. So he's responsible for the thieves, you know? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Interesting, interesting story for sure. Yeah. Well, John, thanks for sharing, man. I'm going to put a bow on it here and wrap up this episode. Um, Y'all out there who, who joined us for this episode, thank you so much, first of all. If you liked it, please hit the like. If you have any comments you want to weigh in on about the song or about the sort of legend of John Dillinger, uh, feel free to drop the comments below. We always appreciate your guys' interaction. Uh, hit the bell if you want to stay tuned for whenever our videos drop. Um, but until next time, John, Greg, or and or I will see you on the next episode of Into the Music. See ya.